I am so pleased that we have Teresa Nipper. Uh, Teresa is an old friend of mine, and we are old um, master gardeners of Mercer County in New Jersey together. Um, she is an amazing butterfly expert. I have gone on the occasional butterfly walk with her, and I'm always awed by her sharp eye and her instant identification. Um, she, I saw her give this particular program and have to admit, you know, come late summer, the skippers are out all over the place, but um, it's like the birds, they're the LBJs, the little brown jobs. And Teresa, she, her knowledge is amazing. She's also a member of the North American Butterfly Association. She has traveled the US to see butterflies. Um, she's also um, seen the monarchs uh, travel through Cape May and owes, she says, her uh, knowledge and her interest to the great Pat Patricia Sutton down at the Cape May Bird Observatory. So with that, um, just a reminder, folks, that you can put your questions in the chat box and generally we will cover them at the end. And in the meantime, it's all yours, Teresa. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's great to see you. Um, let's see, I um, don't need to introduce myself any further. I'm so happy to be here and grateful to Nora for asking me to share um, one of my favorite subjects. So before I start the screen share, just a, just a few things. Um, skippers are small and quick. Skipper is a good name for them. And it's really easy to get frustrated. So my suggestion today is just um, decide you're gonna have a takeaway of one new thing. You figured out it is a skipper. You figured out that a butterfly, um, that skippers have a couple different categories. Um, you found a website, which I'm gonna share at the end where you can get to know more. Um, just one more thing, you know, it can be very overwhelming, um, but get one little skill um, for identifying these cool creatures under your belt, and then you can always build on that knowledge. Probably as plant people, that's very familiar to you. You get a genus, you get a species, and then you build from that. Um, so why don't I start my screen share, and we'll get, we'll get going. Let's see, I've got this up twice. Let's see. Um, how is that? Uh, Nora, if you just come off mute and tell me. Perfect. Everything it's you know? perfect. Okay, you perfect. perfect. Let me just see. Um, uh, okay, it is not. Okay, you have to not have the first slide set up. You just have to have the, um, uh, the, the, the PowerPoint set up and then you hit slideshow once it's up. Oh, okay. So, so just stop skip, share. Okay. And be on my computer and just have it this one. Okay. So, um, okay. So screen share it in the first, like before it's a slideshow. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Exactly. I've so, made the same mistake. <laughs> yes, I've done that before okay so i opened it on my computer so let me come back to zoom i guess you i should have tried that while we were doing <laughs> our and okay so i'm sharing it here with this and what you're saying nora now is, start your slideshow okay and that you worked? started the yeah perfect okay um, and, up. there you go okay so Don't Skip the Skippers is a working title. Discovering Skippers is yet another one. And okay, great. So it, it's working. Thank you for that tip. Actually, I ran into this with something else. So it's thank you for that, Nora. So great, let's dive in. Um, I'm happy that you're willing to spend a little time this morning for me. And as I said, get one new skill. Um, I do also have a, a suggestion if you wish to, um, I, I do a lot of um, 
visual art. And often uh, the teachers in the classes I take just say, oh, just take an image bath. And I love that idea of image bath. A lot of these um, pictures are super gorgeous and you could just let them wash over you. And then of course, because it's being recorded and later on the YouTube channel, you can watch it again and take notes now, take notes later, but definitely enjoy these images in the heart or at the end actually of winter. It's nice to see some butterflies and flowers. Okay, so if this what you think of, when I say skipper, I know I'm dating myself there, or uh, hey, maybe it's this, skipper. Um, but no, we're not talking about either one of those. We're talking about, as Nora said, the LBJs, the little brown jobs of the butterfly world. And as you can see, thank you to Albert Durer for a couple of these, um, brown, is quite lovely and gorgeous and nuanced. And as I say, if you get one thing where you can tell one skipper or that it is a skipper from this presentation, I, I'll be delighted. But yeah, brown can be gorgeous. Brown, black, and white is mostly what they are with maybe a little orange popped in. So let's do a just brief backtrack to butterflies. You all um, spend a lot of time discussing plants and parts of plants and that sort of thing and IDing or just enjoying plants. But let's talk about butterflies, of course, very closely related to plants. They have a very, very close relationship, which we'll talk about in the presentation. But you don't need to know everything. This is just a a uh, graphic that I found online. You don't need to know all those things. Most important thing, number one, a butterfly is an insect. So most, some people are like, ooh, insects, probably not plant people. But when you think of the butterfly, not as just a flower that's floating around your garden, but that actually an insect. Insect is three body parts, head, thorax, abdomen, check, uh, two antenna, check, and six legs, check, that's butterflies. That's insects rather, and butterfly is in that, um, in that category. You don't really need to know all that inner margin, outer margin, that sort of thing. The only thing in this uh, graphic that I'd pay attention to, of course, number one, that it is an insect, and number two, forewing, hind wing. So that forewing, of course, is what's forward, hindwing in the back. And so when I'm talking about IDing, I'm, I may refer to that. I'm also going to refer to uh, dorsal side and ventral side. And so for me, I really have to always remember what am I talking about? So dorsal side, I always think about dorsal fin on a dolphin. So that's actually what would be on... Um, if the butterfly was standing up, it would be on the side that you see when it's open. Ventral, of course, front, that would be what usually is facing the ground if a butterfly is open. So not to worry too much about all of those things, but if there are some of you who are a little more familiar or and love the nitty gritty, that's just a little extra ID for you. So there we go. When I'm talking about ventral, and dorsal, this is a butterfly that's called a silver spotted skipper. And we're looking at the ventral side, which is really the underneath side. But if he was standing up like a human, it would be his front, ventral front, okay? And dorsal side is his back um, or what when he's open. So those are just some helpful terms. Um, yeah, I think you're going to be just absolutely delighted by the fact that you are going to come away with this being for sure able to identify this butterfly, the silver spotted skipper <laughs> has a, it's a rather large butterfly, uh, an inch, an inch and a quarter, and has this big white spot. So you're going to come away, you're going to wow your friends, you're going to say silver spotted skipper, and you're going to get that one. Of course, here it is on um, milkweed, um, which is such a great uh, nectar plant. And you may see a little guy in there on the um, 
flower, which is a monarch butterfly. We're not talking about monarchs today, but yeah, this guy is a terrific plant. If you have a field, it's a bit fuggy for the garden, but um, how beautiful and smells great. So we're gonna talk about um, two, two categories of butterflies today. And one, the first one is spread wing skippers. So just as we saw that they spread their wings like this when they land, that is a silver spotted skipper. They have uh, maybe a little bit of hairiness on their body, nice open wings when they land. So they are tall, they're skippy, but they're still um, skippers and they um, spread their wings in this distinctive fashion. And there's a number of them. Comrade checkered skipper is quite small, maybe a half an inch. Um, the pictures that are on here, some are mine and some are from the North American Butterfly Association website, which has an excellent ID section. I'm gonna share that. Um, website at the end, I, I have a, sc a screen to share it, okay? Come and check it, Skipper. There we go. There's a, a sexual dimorphism, which means that male and female are different. The male has more patterned and more spots. Not It's not something that I've really, you know, dug into to know, but if you like minutia, you're all set with that. Um, Here's the ventral side. It's quite pale and white compared to that brown um, dorsal side, top side. Um, I find that these common checkered skippers are something that pops into the grass and flies like very low over weedy edges. Um, if I know off the top of my head the um, host plant, Host plant is the caterpillar food plant. I'll tell you that. Um, most of these guys eat grasses and I don't know specifically um, the host plant for every single one, but I'll certainly um, let you know. Okay, then another spread wing skipper. These are all about uh, maybe an, uh, an inch, an inch and a half, which is pretty big for a skipper. Um, Horace's dusky wing, you see him in the, um, in the deep uh, summertime. The dusky wings are oak feeders, meaning their caterpillars eat oaks. Uh, if you've listened to Doug Tallamy, and why wouldn't you listen to Doug Tallamy? And you can hear Doug Tallamy at the Master Gardener um, Symposium coming up. Uh, he just touts the oak species as A number one, um, uh, plant for all wildlife and the caterpillars eat that. All right. Here is the female, the top side dorsal of a female. She's got a little bit more patterning. See, he's more plain. She's got a little more patterning. It might be really nice for you also to take note of these um, plants that they're actually on, thistle. It's a great plant, even though this one, I think, is a non-native thistle. Fields of thistles are delicious for butterflies. So if you see one, stop by with your car in July and see what's on it. Horace's dusky wing, another view of the female. I put this on there because you kind of can see through to those um, very distinctive uh, dots on the edge of its forewing, remember, the front wing. Um, some people say, and this is how I remember, that this looks like a shark bite, like if a shark went out ah, and that was its teeth marks. I have a very weird mnemonic sense of how I remember things. So you'll forgive me if it doesn't jive with you, find your own, but I always go shark bite, horse's dusky ring. Um, yeah, there we go. There's the ventral side, that's the front ventral side, once again, on a thistle. There's another very similar uh, dusky wing, wild indigo dusky wing. You could maybe guess what the host plant for this dusky wing is. 
Uh, yep, yeah, you're right. Wild indigo, which is in the pea family. Um, they're often found flying near um, Baptisia in the wild, down in the Pine Barrens. Um, not as much um, dots and, you know, it's more like rows of stripes. The female, once again, has a little bit more going on on that uh, forewing, not as much as a horse's dusky wing. But once again, hey, you could come, your takeaway could be, hey, it's a dusky wing. So you've got skipper, then you've got dusky wing. You're doing great. Um, I'm hoping that you're also in enjoying how just these deep chocolate brown colors can be so gorgeous. There's the ventral side of wild indigo dusky wing. All right, a smaller little butterfly that I think of as a starlit night, common sooty wing. It's quite a bit smaller, maybe three a half inch to three quarter inches. Its host plant is lamb's quarters. So lamb's quarters has gotten a lot of attention recently from the um, edible plant community, supposed to taste like I don't know, asparagus or something. It's something that I pull out of my garden because I have a very small garden. I can't let the weeds grow. But back in the back 40, I let some of those go and hope that uh, common sooty wing will show up because that's the host plant. Um, yeah, this little trailing edge of the four wing makes me think of a starlit night. They can be, excuse me, they can be quite dark, almost black looking, as you see in this picture. Sitting here on some oxalis, just enjoying. All right, ventral side, front ventral side. You don't see as many dots. All right, so now we're getting into the, so these guys, the spread wing skippers, those dusky wings, and they land and then spread their wings flat, okay? Now we're going to what's known as grass skippers. Many, many of these guys have um, grasses as their host plant. And this one is the smallest one in my in my repertoire today, quite small, less than a half inch, between a half and a quarter, teeny tiny, thus its name, least skipper. Ventral side is nice and orange, very beautiful, very tiny. They float through the grass. I particularly like these um, pippy, long stocking, stripy antenna. <laughs> Something about that just delights me. Um, but you'll see here is another ventral side on mealy cup sage, Salvia farinaceae, I think it is, popular garden plant. It's really good for butterflies and the deer don't eat it. Um, but check this out on the dorsal side. I'm not sure that you can exactly see, but they hold their, uh, here's the forewing, that's flat. They hold their hind wing up vertically and sort of like, I think of like a fighter jet, you know, sitting there on the tarmac or sitting there on an aircraft carrier where there's wings that come up and then the flat wings. And that is very uh, distinctive for the grass skippers. Um, this is one, if you wanna delve into uh, any skipper today, get this guy because they are in the late summer when there's clouds of um, skippers flying around a field. Many, many, many of them will be this butterfly. A sachem named after a Native American chief. They male, and that's the dorsal side. See, it's got this jet fighter one wing up. And then the other wing is flat, but he has this very, very almost rectangular um, stigma spot right on its wing. It's big, it's blocky, it's distinctive. And that's a great way to know the sachem, especially the male. The female is a little less um, distinctive, but they've got some stuff going on that can, um, definitively identify them. And for, um, uh, it's well, definitively is, is relative. 
he, the male sachem can be so um, so different. It can be it can be yellow, it can be gold, but they all have this little mm, sunrise spot on the wing. If you see it from the top and see that big brown blob of the stigma on its wing, you got it. But the bottom side can be a little bit more mysterious. And the female has these chevrons on her wing, on the ventral side, on the front, on the bottom side, like that chevron. They can be very different in color. Don't look at the color, look at the pattern. As I said, this guy is very prolific and all over the place in the late um, in the late summer. And you can see the male right there. The skin is open. You see that big block stigma. Bam. That's a male sachem. All right. So let's get into some others. Once again, note the uh, fighter jet um, way that this particular grass skipper alights on a flower. Um, here's how I know, and here's again one of my crazy ways that I get to know. His name is Fiery Skipper. It's more of a southern species that comes up, but check out that margin right there. To me, it's like flames. So that's how I remember when I see those flames, it's a Fiery Skipper. The female's not so, much, not so easy as the male. And these guys are quite uh, sexually dimorphic. All of them aren't, but those in particular are. On the ventral side, the uh, bottom or front side, here's another little reminder, fiery skipper, pepper spots, little pepper spots on it. That's how I remember what that is. So when you're in the field with me, you may think that I'm amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not, it's just I have an eye to figuring out what I'm supposed to look for. So, and you can do that too. Here she is, she's got some pepper spots too, the female. They're not as distinctive as the male. Okay, another one of, I always say, this is my favorite butterfly. And then later I've said that 10 times for 10 different butterflies in a, uh, a presentation, yeah, that happens all the time, but as plant people who love plants, you're probably familiar with that. Anyway, Pex Skipper is a very uh, familiar denizen in my garden, which is in Bucks County, right over across the river now. And they have this very distinctive mark here. And I, you will forgive me if I say something that I borrowed from my then 15 year old son in identifying butterflies. He's like, this butterfly gives you the finger, mom. Um, if that's a mnemonic that really works for you and is helpful, great. But this one cell is sort of pulled out as if someone was being rude to you. Um, yeah, that helps me. I, I'll never forget that. I was like, thank you, Peter. That's in my brain forever. But hey, it might help you too. There we go, that little one uh, cell bar to be, to be more scientific, the one cell bar is pulled out. I want you to note what plant this uh, particular Pex skipper is on. It is um, New York ironweed. And if you're familiar with some of the properties over in New Jersey, this one is at the property on Van Dyke road in Hopewell, and it's called, um, oh crap, I just forgot, Cedar, Cedar, uh, it'll come back to me. It's right on Van Dyke. It's a um, DNR Greenway property. It's a wet meadow. And one time I just happened upon this August afternoon where the New York ironweed was all blooming and there were hundreds of pet skippers on it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, we have we have beautiful, beautiful um, natural areas in both New Jersey and over in Pennsylvania. And I can't say enough how to just put your boots on and get out there and, and discover. Peck skipper, skipper male, once again, has that jet fighter um, stance. 
he's got just distinctive dots. I don't have any reminder about this one. Just note, note that um, this photo credit is from Jeffrey Glassberg, the writer of both The Swift Guide and Butterfly Through Binoculars. Um, they are excellent field guides to um, butterflies. Jeff Glassberg is the guy who really gave the gift to us of not capturing, killing, and flattening butterflies and pinning them that he wrote the book, Butterfly Through Binoculars. Really transformed the industry because butterfly manufacturers became, I'm sorry, binocular manufacturers became um, really um, sensitive to the wants and needs of the consumer. And the consumer wanted close focus binoculars where you could see butterflies better. And so they have a um, sustainable and hands-off um, no-kill method of enjoying butterflies, and that is in large part thanks to um, Dr. Jeffrey Glassberg. Here we've got the female. Um, she's got this orange trailing edge. Yes, you need the field guide to get them from the, from the top. All righty, let's move on to the next one. Here we've got a... Um, a ventral side of a tawny edged skipper. I'm gotta admit that I'm much better with ventral or front bottom side than top sides, dorsal sides. And so I'm usually wait till they close their wings. But tawny edge has this orange edge, pretty unmarked um, on, the, um, on the hind wing, but it's got that nice trailing edge. And then of course there's the top side. You can see where the orange trailing edge you know, comes into play. There you go. The male is nice and bright. He's kind of got, similar to the sachem, he's got this stigma also um, on the wing, but not as bold, not as really rectangular as the sachem. Alrighty, so we're getting into a couple of butterflies that in the butterfly world are known as, quote, the witches. They're small, they're fast, they're brown, they're pretty much unmarked. Um, and it's just fine if you're just like, yeah, no, I, I can't do that. They're just too hard. But I find it pretty fun in the field to really try to piece these out. So anyway, there's three of them, one of them being little glassy wing. And this picture doesn't show it really well, but one field mark, um, is that they have a white spot. This is the antennal club, antenna, of course, antennal club, and right under the antennal club, there's a bright white spot on the antenna. You gotta see that with binoculars, yeah. Here we go, showing the white spot much more clearly on this one. The little glassy wing female is very true to its name. It's got like window, glassy window panes on the top of the wing. And that's basically the only mark on the whole butterfly. Um, the male, also some uh, window panes of white, not quite as jazzy as the female. But there again, you're seeing that white spot underneath the antennal club, antenna, antennal club, white spot. If you see that, you know it. Okay, yeah, look at this one. Crap, it looks a lot like that one. <laughs> However, look at the antenna, antenna, look at the antenna club, no white there. A northern broken dash, and when it's closed up, often has this, mm, what's described as a backward three sort of curve on its wing. No white on the antennal club. And there's another one. You know, you could almost like imagine that might be white the way this picture looks, but it's not. It's got the backwards three on its wing. The male, once again, these are the stigmas that are on top of many of the skippers. This one is not as um, prominent as the sachem. And then the female. These guys are super tricky, I'm just telling you. 
The last one is the Dunskipper of the Three Witches. Real, real non-distinct brown guy. Pretty much not any markings at all on it. Sometimes if they're fresh, um, just a little note, uh, when a, a butterfly is newly born as an adult, their scales are sparkly and fresh and really distinctive. And that's the best time to identify it. But, you know, they hang around in the field, they're moving against flowers and their scales fall off. Their, their name, their genus is Lepidoptera, Lepa, um, so scaly wing, scale, terra, like pterodactyl, that's wing, and Lepa is scales. So they have scales, like overlaying scales, like fish. And once those, those are the colorations, once they fall off, they can be quite um, ragged looking and dull. But anyway, I digress. Um, the Dun Skipper, when, when they're brand new, they have a nice bright gold head, very gold head. And um, that can be quite distinctive. There's dorsal. See, not really hardly any um, markings at all on that. Even the female, she has very, very um, faint marks. So, well, good luck with those, what they know as the witches. If we're in the field sometime together, we'll figure them out together. It'll be fun. Here they are together, male and female. You see, she's got just a couple dots. He's got no dots. They've got that distinctive uh, jet fighter look. So, you know, they're a grass skipper. He doesn't have a uh, white on the antennal club. So this is just things you can sort of check off in your mind or your field guide saying, well, it's not this, it's not this, maybe it's this. All right. One of my favoritely sexual dimorphic butterflies, I don't even know if that's a word, but I just made it up. Uh, Zabulon skipper, also named after um, Native American, I believe a chief, Zabulon. He is so bold and sparkly and jazzy, and he is territorial. I walk at a place in Cape May, and there's always a Zabulon skipper, and he's like, this is my area, people. And I'm walking by, he flies out at me. I'm like, dude, I'm like a lot bigger than you. But they can be really big and bold and... Um, Maybe you can tell he's he's one of the ones I really like. This looks like it's on a plant, which, you know, is non-native. And I just forgot what it is. I just forgot the name of it. It's um sort of a bachelor's buttons there. Uh, anyway, it'll come back to me. It's like a weedy edge plant. Spotted, uh spotted uh um, nope, that's it. It's It'll come back. Yeah. Okay. Here's the man. Here's his wife. She is very, very different from him. Uh, chocolatey brown, beautiful white leading edge. Um, you'll see her here on the Mealy Cup Sage again. It's one of their favorites. I just love the two of them together. Um, and how different they look, male and female. Something about the, how chocolatey brown, and this trailing edge on both her hind and forewing when she's new can be almost purpley. It's beautiful. There she, are. there she is, very dark on the top. But the man, he's not. He is um, bright orange. Yeah, that's one I stuck in there because they are quite different. All righty, well, we're ne nearing the 40-minute uh, mark, and I just wanted to make sure you had a chance to uh, get the site where many, many of the pictures are coming from. Thank you to the North Jersey chapter of the North American Butterfly Association. If you have your phone, you want to do a little camera or on your phone do a screenshot, the North American Butterfly Association, just a brief word right now. First of all, this is called Legacy Site because the whole site is being given a, a, a really incredible overhaul. Uh, but 
the New North Jersey chapter has a very rich um, site that, um, first of all, gorgeous pictures. They have uh, um, field notes where the butterflies are found and not for just the skippers, for most of the butterflies that can be seen in New Jersey, places you can go to see them, um, notes on their phenology, when they appear, are they late summer, early summer, or whatever, um, host plant, everything. I cannot um, recommend enough that you just go check out this site if you're at all curious about butterflies and maybe even if you're not, it has gorgeous pictures. You're gonna just love it. A word about North American Butterfly Association. This is the premier um, butterfly um, organization in the US and beyond. North American Butterfly Association, including both Canada and Mexico. They have a convention every other year in all different places through the United States. They are the distributors of lots of information about butterfly conservation, and they have a gorgeous um, center, the National Butterfly Center in Mission, Texas. If you happen to be down there, if you're a birder and you're on the border in the lower Rio Grande Valley, uh, definitely mark it as a site to check the gardens, acres and acres of native plant gardens, hordes of butterflies, lots of good people to tell you what's what, and uh, you will really enjoy that if you find yourself in Texas. But if you just find yourself in New Jersey, you've got a lot of um, wonderful uh, resources on this website. Um, I coupled it with this picture that you may think, wow, that's so um, tropical butterfly. Like, what is that bright green one? Well, I'm here to tell you that's a native New Jersey butterfly, people. That is called a Hessel's hair streak, denizen of cedar swamps down in the Pine Barrens. Gorgeous and yeah, it's really that green. Tiny butterfly, um, maybe just a little bit bigger than your thumbnail, but um, get out there, see what you can see. Butterflies start um, to start flying around in, um, in April mid-April to late April. And um, I hope that my presentation will help you to enjoy them and enjoy the fun. Here's so you know that your uh, teacher today has been on the cover of American Butterfly Magazine, so I'm famous. And um, this, but with, I'm with my friend, Elena Edwards. We do this kind of fun stuff. We just have a blast out there. We enjoy, we just revel in the butterflies and we have a ball. So um, yeah, get out there, check out. Um, there's field trips that are, if you connect with the North Jersey folks, there's tons of field trips. I know lots of places in Pennsylvania as well. Bowman's Hill run, uh, has butterfly walks. So um, yeah, take your new your newfound knowledge from this and go um, out there and catch a few butterflies and thank you so much. Thank you so much, Teresa. Um, oh, yeah, I can, well, I, maybe I won't stop sharing in case any of the questions relate to one of the slides. Right. Okay, so I'm going back to the beginning. We okay. do have a question. Um, so all skippers are butterflies, but not all butterflies are skippers. Can you give a genuine definition of skipper? Sure. Sure. Uh, let's go back a few to the, here. This is a good one. Um, skippers are small. They are uh, uh, maybe a little bigger than your thumbnail. They have this very heavy body. Okay. And are generally brown and orange. So in taxonomic, taxonomic terms, when you look in a field guide, they're always in the back of the book. Butterflies start out with the big swallowtails and they're just different genus and species. So this group is grouped together. Um, they have a couple different genuses, but they're grouped together as skippers because of their behavior. And also they're small and brown. Sometimes people think they can be confused with moths, day flying moths. 
but distinctive in a couple ways. A um, butterfly has an antenna with a little club on the end. A moth has either a feathery um, antenna that looks like a feather or it's just straight. The second thing, and maybe I can see, hmm, if it would be a moth, they wouldn't hold their wings this way. And the way that moths fly is because their forewing and high wing are, have like a little um, a hook, like a hook together. And I forget what it's called. It's not articulated, but they fly more awkwardly than butterflies and not zip and fast. So that, that's more of a distinction between moths and butterflies. But yeah, these guys are all um, smaller than, you know, say a monarch or an American lady or a swallowtail, quite a bit smaller and mostly the coloration. But you can see, especially in this picture of the dun skipper, big, heavy body. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they do they tend to just come out in midsummer and later or do they come out in the spring along with all the showy guys? Yes, yes. Um, a couple of them, and I don't think that I have a picture of it just because I needed, I needed to curate because I have such a love and so many pictures. But similar to these spread wing skippers like this wild indigo dusky wing, um, there's another one that looks very similar to a Horace's dusky wing, but it comes out in the spring and it's called juvenile's dusky wing, sort of like juvenile, but it's N-A-L, juvenile was a, uh, a man's name, I think uh, one of the lepidopterous name, spread wing skipper, it'll be flying in April. And then as the summer goes on, that species is pretty much replaced as the dominant species that looks like that with a Horace's dusky wing. So if right. it's April and you see something that looks like this is a juvenile's dusky wing, they look similar, there are differences. But oh yeah, April. There's okay. a few. There's actually um, a very um, specific butterfly, a cobweb skipper. It's just an April and May. It's just an April and May flyer. Yep. All right. Um, can you address what the importance of the, all these little guys are to the environment? Sure, sure. Butterflies. I mean, first are, you know, what they call one of those species that brings people to everything else that's good about the environment. So I'm going to count that. If you see butterflies in a garden, it's like the canary in the mine shaft, you know you're in a healthy environment. So they're really good indicator species for health, for diversity. Um, butterflies are pollinators, weak pollinators, you know. In this picture, you can see there's a beautiful beetle. They're probably a little bit better at pollinating, but butterflies definitely will go in there. They put their tongue, or it's also called a proboscis, like a, like a drinking straw, deep into the flower, sucking up nectar. But hey, you know what else is deep in a flower? Pollen moves it to the next um, flower on either its legs, its body, or its mouth parts. So pollinating, indicating the health of the environment and um, who can argue with beauty. Good point. <laughs> um, do they, okay, this is getting in the weeds. Do they know why the stigma is on so many of these little guys? Um, you know, it, the thought is that a stigma uh, for, I tell the little kids when I'm, um, uh, when I'm teaching them about butterflies or more accurately, I say them, the man wears the perfume or it's more like, you know, your uh, middle school kid with his uh, perfume. <laughs> the man that, the thought is that that stigma emits a pheromone that attracts the female. And so in the case of uh, sachem, it's, it's quite large and distinctive. I don't know that that necessarily means it emits more pheromone, more perfume, if you will. Um, but that apparently is indicating that it um, emits that to attract right. female. And she, um, 
she can take it or not. I've seen them just like turn their backs on the males. It's like, mm -hmm, no, I'm not doing that. Not today. It's it's actually pretty funny. <laughs> All right. Um, are skipper caterpillars easily identified? Mm. You with the with the correct guide, of course they are. <laughs> um, the David. Um, David, what's his name? <laughs> He's a big, thick um, caterpillar guide. And it's a caterpillar guide for both moths and um, butterflies. And darn if I can remember that guy's last name. Uh, caterpillar, I can tell you. Um, David Gilbert. No. No. Um, I'll think of it and then I'll send it to Nora and she'll get it to you. Oh, All right. right. Wait, caterpillars of, yes. This or is David it. Wagner. 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 David Wagner. I met him at one of the conferences. David Wagner, a comprehensive guide on the caterpillar. You find a caterpillar and many times the caterpillars we find are moth caterpillars. Um, they're very specific to their host plant. So you look at the host plant it's on, you look what it's doing, you look at that, use the big fit guide, tons of um, other guides online. However, what I find is that I don't often see the caterpillars of skippers. They, okay, so a skipper is small, you know, a bow that's a little bit bigger than your thumbnail, maybe some of them are bigger. Their caterpillars are tiny. And often, excuse me, what they do because they're grass um, feeders, the, especially the grass skippers, they make a little nest inside a folded, longitudinally folded piece of grass. And you really got to pry them open to try to see um, the caterpillar. Yeah, so I would say to the question is not easy to do. However, get a good field guide or an online guide, take lots of photos, photos even with your phone, maybe especially with your phone because you have it all the time, go in there. I'm also highly, highly recommending the, um, uh, the app is an app, um, I Naturalist, small i, capital N, Naturalist. I use it all the time. Take a picture. It's a very, um, it's a crowdsourced, um, site, but many scientific folks use that, and it's excellent for ID. So you've got you've got choices: book, app. I I use iNaturalist a lot. I love it. Great. All right. So our, our um suddenly the sun is moving, so I'm having a little trouble. Okay, we're getting a lot of thank yous, and <laughs> someone said they might be able to actually identify one or two if they sit sit still long enough. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Well, uh, you know, you also have to sit still, which yeah. is you know maybe that's a thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, Teresa, thank you very much. Maybe we'll uh we'll set up a butterfly walk with you in the summertime sometime. How yeah. delightful would that be? Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much. And uh, folks, if you want to review this, the, the uh, recording will be available um, shortly. And then, of course, Teresa has very generously agreed to let us put this program up on YouTube. In the Absolutely. meantime, yeah. in the meantime, go out and check your, your crocuses and your snowdrops. The things are coming into bloom and you do see yeah. insects. So oh, yes. Yeah. So. I'm seeing on some of the logs that there's butterflies starting to fly on those warm days, morning cloaks. They're they're posting sightings already. So, yeah, sounds good. Great. All right. Everybody have a nice day. Happy gardening. Thank you again, Teresa. Sure. Bye, friends. Bye.